are so excited. Uh, we, we're going to have church, all right? We are just going to have church. This is, uh, I don't know if you call it a funeral for Brother Norris, but uh, Brother Norris was a very, very, very good friend of mine. And uh, I cannot help but rejoice. And uh, so I hope you have that understanding. This may not be your typical funeral. We're going to sing and uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to try to worship God. Everything we do today, we want to just please and honor Him. And uh, I am so thankful for a place called heaven. And, uh, and heaven is getting sweeter every day, every day. And uh, I'm, I'm glad it's real. And on behalf of the family, though, I do want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for them, uh, the, the flowers, the gifts, the calls, the food, and, and everything, and everything you've done. And then I personally, I personally want to thank, I want to thank Morgan for taking very good care of my friend. I've been in a lot of places. I've seen a lot of people being taken care of. Nobody was better taken care of than Brother Norris Phillips. And I am, I am thrilled that uh, she did that great, great of a job. And uh, uh, so I personally want to thank her for taking that good a care of my friend. Uh, my friend took care of me for a long time. Uh, he joined our church in 1973, which was three years before I got here. And uh, I joined at 13. So I've known Brother Norris since I was 13 years old. And I'm 100, so you take away 13. And uh, uh, I have known Brother Norris Phillips over 45 years. And uh, he is my friend. Uh, I'll tell you more about that later. And when you see him, uh, I, I remember him like this. But when you see him in the closing days and, and uh, you see him struggle to breathe and you say, I sure am glad there's a place called heaven. So I'm thrilled. Uh, we, don't, I hear we don't say goodbye to Brother Norris. We're just going to say see you later. And, uh, and it ain't near as far off as we think it is. All right. And so uh, we're going to rejoice I know we're going to grieve, we're going to have some tears, and we're going to miss him, uh, but we're going to have church. Uh, Brother Norris loved church. You'll, you'll know that by the time we leave here today. You'll know he loved Forest Hills Baptist Church, and, uh, and our people who are here, uh, uh, you, this is just a, this is just a, a little bit, uh, but Brother Norris, I was talking to Brother Nicky a while ago. Brother Nicky said, I would not be here if it wasn't for Brother Norris. Uh, Brother Norris found me. And uh, I mean, it was just, and there's people I've had all over this, all over this building. Uh, we owe him a great debt, and so we're going to honor him today. But we're going to pray and ask the Lord to to help us. All right, Heavenly Father, we Lord bow before you today, and Lord again, we're been gathered together today because of death. And Lord, to some, death is an enemy, but Lord, here today, it, it's a friend. And I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit came and escorted Brother Norris through the pearly gates. So, Lord, we grieve. We realize that he is his whole. We realize that he has been reunited with a whole lot of people. So, Lord, we're excited for him. But, Lord, we just pray that you'd help us as, uh, Lord, we say some few final remarks and we'll have nothing left but memories. I pray that you would, uh, Lord, help us stir our hearts. Then, Lord, if there's one here today that does not know you as Savior, Lord, it was your thrill of the family, and it was thrill of the Norris to know that someone got born again at his funeral. So, Lord, I pray that you'll just have your sweet and mother way here, and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. All right, if you will, take your songbook and go to page number 10. Page number 10, let's stand together. We'll sing the first and the last. I have decided to follow Jesus. 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 No turning back. Speed. 
Uh, the songs that you'll hear today are songs that Brother Norris, uh, if you knew Brother Norris off, uh, it was around him much, especially if he was working, he was always whistling or humming. And, uh, and if it was whistling or humming, that means the gears were moving. He was in deep thought. He was fixing to solve a problem. And, uh, but he would always hum, and these are the songs that he would hum uh, or whistle. And one of them was, I have decided to follow Jesus. And, and pretty much all the songs you'll hear today are songs that he, he hummed. And uh, uh, I was visiting with him a few weeks ago. And uh, uh, every time I'd go see him, every time I got ready to leave, I would always thank him for being my friend. And uh, I owe him a great debt. And uh, so I, I was, few, just a few weeks ago, I was sitting there and watching his hands, and, and I noticed his hands, and they, they, they had gotten weak. And uh, I started thinking about, while I was watching him, all the things I saw those hands do. And uh, you haven't been 45 years, and Brother Norris was a worker. And uh, Brother Norris is what one to sit around watch somebody else do anything. All right, he was in it. And so I began to think about that, those hands, and it dawned on me that Brother Norris was a mighty man. I mean, I was so close to greatness, and if you're not careful, you'll miss it. And so when, I, when the term mighty man came to me, I thought immediately of David's mighty men. So I, I, I want to read a verse, and uh, I hope you're not in a hurry, but uh, we're going to honor him today. And uh, in, in 1 Chronicles 11, it, 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 it just gives an intro to his men. And in verse 10 it says, These also are the chief of the mighty men whom David had, who strengthened themselves with him in his kingdom. Now listen to this. Now, that first part says that these mighty men, and I'm not going to go through them, but you talk about some tough guys. These were men. And he says, these men made themselves strong for David. Not for themselves, but for David. Now look what it says in, in, in the rest of the verse. It says, and uh, to make him, come out David, to make him king. Accounting to the word, according to the word of the Lord concerning Israel. So these mighty men got together for a purpose. And that was to make David king. And, uh, and these were some mighty men. I, I, got, I got to thinking about them and uh, uh, the, 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 these mighty men. And uh, the truth of the matter is I got to watch a great man. I thought David, David had his mighty men. Moses had Joshua. Paul had Silas, Barnabas had Mark, Elijah had Elisha, and Brother John had Brother Norris, and Brother Jim had Brother Norris, and Forest Hills Baptist Church had Brother Norris. Many, many times. Now, you got to understand, he joined here, he's been here 50 years, and uh, many, many times, Brother John, something would happen, and Brother John would say, call Norris. Around here, 911 was not 911. Around here, 911 was 0836. That's who you called. You called Brother Norris. And, uh, and it didn't matter. I mean, if it was broke, if it needed, if it, I mean, you just called him. And uh, so I'm, I'm just thrilled that we, I got a lot of memories to, 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 to talk about. And, and I, I'm, I was thinking about it. I said, I, I sure am glad that my boys have been able to grow up into a church that had men in it. I mean men. I'm not talking about this woke crowd. I'm talking about we had men in this church. And Brother Norris is one of the men that my boys got to look up to. 49 years a member, and he actually, of course, came along before he became a member. Uh, I was talking to Morgan the other day, and Morgan asked him, how did you become involved in Forest Hills Baptist Church and I didn't get all the details, but the gist of it is this. He, some, he knew a guy who was involved in the bus ministry. 
Now, you got to understand, our bus ministry, we had buses like Noah's Ark. That was the name of it, but it came over on the ark. I'm talking, we're talking about those guys. We had one named Elijah's Chariot. And, uh, but we had buses, and we had eight or nine buses. And, and uh, somebody, uh, he knew a bus driver or somebody working on a bus, called him and said, I need help. A bus won't run. So he said, I started going out there because they needed help on the buses. And I just never left. And uh, uh, we had a big time. Pam remembers her dad was the pastor here for 34 years, and uh, Brother Tom was the first one. Brother Norris was here with Brother Tom. And uh, then Brother John came, and Brother Norris still here with the buses. And uh, Pam remembers her daddy coming in, and he'd been helping Brother Norris work on the buses. He came in shaking his head. He said, you're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe it. They said, what? We had an engine block, a Chevrolet engine block, on the kitchen table. <laughs> on the kitchen table. And Morgan asked him, after she heard that story, she asked Brother Norris, she says, how many, how many motors did you have in the kitchen? How many you think was there? And he thought about it and said, oh, probably four or five engine blocks on the kitchen table. I got thinking about that and those mighty men. You know, David had a mighty man that, could slew, that, that, that slew 300 men at one time. David had a man that slew, and I don't know what this means, two lying like men in snow at the same time. He had another man that defended a, a, a pea patch until his hand clayed to the sword. But he didn't have a man brave enough to put an engine block on his wife's kitchen table. <laughs> Brother Norris did. Brother Norris did it five times. I'm telling you, Brother Norris was a mighty man, a mighty man. And uh, you talk about great feats. I was talking to Ricky the other day, and Ricky, I can't get all the details, but uh, we were taking our, I, I wasn't, but the, the church was going to camp, either camp or a convention or something, and I was, the bus was on, I was going down there, and it broke down. Well, we called 911, 0836. And uh, Brother Norris had a Chevrolet pickup truck, came to the camp, hooked the chain to it, and drug it home with a Chevrolet pickup truck. I th we think he rebuilt the motor in it and had it back at camp before camp got out on Friday. That's a pretty great feat. By the way, he did that while he worked a 40-plus hour a week at, uh, job at Nucor. I'm telling you, my Brother Norris was a mighty man. Uh, Brother Norris drove a bus, fixed the bus, sang in the choir, on the board of stewards and the board of deacons, prepared men's fellowship food for years, cut the grass. We had a lot of grass around here to cut, and especially before this building was here, we'd have, uh, we'd have men's meeting on Saturday morning. Everybody showed up with a lawnmower. And there'd be, I don't know, six, seven, seven, eight, nine lawnmowers out there. Brother Norris bring three of them. And they'd unload, the, they'd, unload the wagon, they'd unload his cart, and everybody got a lawnmower, and it was like a city out here. I mean, it's trying it's, it's to get the grass cut, and, uh, 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 but uh, Brother Norris cutting grass. And then Hugo came. Most of you don't remember Hugo. Most of you probably don't remember Brother Norris before Hugo. But during Hugo, we had a lot of damage around here. It looked like a bomb went off if you weren't alive back then. It was, it was something. And we had a lot of shingles off. That whole school building, the whole school building was out. out the shingles were gone. And, uh, just, and so we, we started laying shingles. And Brother Norris, Brother John, all the men of the church got out here and we laid shingles. We laid shingles, we laid shingles for everybody. Uh, if you could get shingles and you need your house covered, we would, we would, we'd put shingles on your house. And Brother Norris and Brother John were putting shingles on a lady's house. And Brother John just made a statement about looking at something. A truck had gone by, a, a diesel a truck had gone by, and uh, a, a big truck. And he said, look at that truck, Norris. And Norris stood up to look at the truck and stepped off the roof. And when he hit the ground, his back was broke. And now I'll never forget the day Brother John called me. He was at the school, and he was bawling his eyes out. He said, Brother Norris fell, Brother Norris fell, Brother Norris fell. I think his back's broke. So the hospital, go to the Bishville, end up at McLeod Hospital, and I walk in to see him. And he's, I, he says, Doc says, I probably won't walk again. But God told me I would. If you do the math, 
Hugo came in 89. Today is 2022. He'd been walking for 32 years. And he'd been walking straight, but he'd been walking for 32 years. Brother Norris never got bitter, never got mad, never got angry. He just figured he could serve God anyhow. And he kept on. He broke his back in 89, and I, I, it's, been, it's been so long because Brother Norris has just, he's been, he, he, he walked like that for 32 years. Three years later, I'm building a house. Brother Norris comes out to my house to help me, and he crawls under my house with a broke back. Help me do my plumbing on my house. That's Brother Norris. But, but before he got, some of you don't know, but he had a whole body cast, a whole body cast. I, I, I looked out the school, I looked out the window here one day, and he was, he was, his legs were sticking out beneath a bus, and he's in his full body cast working on a bus. I'm telling you, Brother Norris was a man. He came to me one day, and I tell the story all the time here at church. He came to me. He says, "Do, do you have a do, do you have a chandelier for your house?" I said, "No, sir." Hadn't even started looking for one yet. He said, "I found one." I said, "Okay." He said, "I found it in a dump." I said, "Okay." He said, "If you want it, I'll fix it up. I'll 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 refurbish it." I said, "Yes, sir. I'd be glad to have it." And it's a five bulb chandelier. He took it all apart, rewired it, painted it, got new globes on it. And it still hangs in our foyer of our house. And you can't have it. (laughs) You cannot have it. Um, He drove a bus until the insurance company said he was too old. Do you know that means he drove a church bus or a church van 18 years after his back was broke? When he broke his back, he was 52 years old. Do you realize most people would have just cashed in right then? I think I'll just coast it on out. But my brother Norris he got involved in the barbecue. We couldn't have the barbecue without him. If you know anything about us, we had barbecue. For 39 years, we had barbecue. Brother Norris is known worldwide for liver hash. I promise you to be the best you ever ate. Liver hash. He'd show up Friday morning. 2.30 in the morning, broke back, walking crooked, carrying pressure pots in. I said, Brother Norris, I'm going to be here at 2.30 to help you get in the building. I'd be here at 2.30. He'd already be in the building cutting up, uh, cutting up onions. I said, Brother Norris, I was coming to help you. He said, oh, he said, I woke up early. Never did wine. Never got bitter. Always whistling. Oh, how I love Jesus. Never, never got down. He didn't know what it meant to quit. We're going to miss him. But I want the family to understand. I want the kids to understand where you come from. But Norris didn't know the meaning of the word quit. He didn't understand what can't meant. It's been an honor. An absolute honor to be his friend. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd help us as we continue with the service. I pray that, Lord, you just give comfort and grace. And, I, Lord, we are, we are talking much about Brother Norris, but I pray that, Lord, you'll get the preeminence, that you'll get the glory. I know Brother Norris wants you to have glory from everything that happens. So, Lord, please help us now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I think at this time... Brother John's going to come and uh, sing for us. I was going to say a few things about Dad, but I don't think I could have done a better job. Appreciate it, Jim. As Jim said, these are if you ever heard dad or was around dad, he would hum, be humming while he was working or whistling. And 
couple of songs here that he loved. You would always hear him humming or putting a whistle in these songs. And I thought it fitting to try to sing them for you today. In the dark of the midnight have I oft hid my face while the storms howl above me and there's no hiding place mid the crash of the thunder precious lord hear my cry keep me safe till the storm passes by till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the storm passes by. Many times Satan whispers, there is no need to try. Oh, there's no end of sorrow. There's no hope by and by. But I know thou art with me. And tomorrow I'll rise where the storms never darken the skies till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever. From the sky, hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Now when the long night has ended, and the storms come no more. Let me stand in thy presence on the bright, peaceful shore. In that land where the tempest never comes, Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of thy hand keep me safe till the storm passes by uh, one of the other songs that you always heard dad whistling was oh how i love jesus and I think that it would be appropriate if you would all just sing the chorus with me about two rounds. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. 
us because he first loved me. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. One more song that Dad loved. Not a lot of people knew this song, but Dad had heard it at some point, and it became one of his favorites. <clears throat> the holy hills of heaven call me to mansions bright across the sea where loved ones wait and crowns are given the hills of home keep calling me now I see loved ones over yonder tears are gone and hearts are free and from the throne King Jesus beckons Oh, the hills of home Keep calling me This house of flesh Is but a prison Bars of bone Hold my soul But the doors of clay Are gonna burst wide open When the angel sets My spirit free And I'll take my flight Like a mighty eagle When the hills of home Keep calling me We love you, Dad. Bear with me. Me and Pa had times where we would be talking about something and he wouldn't exactly agree with me. <laughs> and, um, he knew that Brother John had written a poem for his mom. Well, he thought that was the one that was read at Ma's funeral. Well, Pa, I got it right. <laughs> farewell. A bid farewell with a simple so long. And this was always an expectation of you coming home. Upon that day, when you drove away, to become the spouse of the one to whom you belong. So long, return soon, don't be long. Yes, the day did arrive when off to school you tried. So long, be good. Now for the daily chores, all must be done as a rule. For soon you will return from school and be ready for me to greet 
you're home. Then there was the long day following the so long when my little boy departed for his tour of duty to perform. I know I shouldn't cry, for proud I am of his new uniform. So long, son, right soon. There's the so long spoken when friends meet and depart within each day's feet. So long, see you tomorrow, ends the days, labors of journey complete. So long, always gives a hope of a brighter day. With laughter and smiles, no clouds of gray. But there comes a time when farewell is the word to say. For farewell extends our thoughts beyond today to that eternal rest up in heaven to stay. Yet farewell brings hope of reunion someday. Farewell, my child. Farewell, I say. I must bid farewell to the ways of the world, to all my little boys and girls. It's been so long, see you soon. Although life looking for a new day to bloom. But the time has come to bid you farewell and rush on home, my Jesus to tell. Remember, now and don't be long for up in heaven we have a new song <laughs> with only one greeting welcome home and never a farewell as we rejoice around his throne <laughs> written by john c smith jr in memory of <clears throat> mrs letha phillips <laughs> the mother of his dear friend and brother and Lord, Norris Phillips. All right. Well, I'm gonna, I got thinking, I had to cut some things out, talk about God and ours all day long. And um, so uh, I want to read a, three verses to you out of the book of Second Timothy that I think is fitting to Brother Norris. And... Um, 2 Timothy chapter 4, the Bible says in verse number 6, it says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. As I said earlier, uh, uh, Brother Dwight, uh, Brother Brother Norris is a mighty man. And um, I can't I can't say it. I can't say it any plainer than that to me. I thought he was a great man. In this passage of scripture, I have another great man who's the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul had made a few statements. He says, I fought a good fight finished my course, and I've kept the faith. And I thought about that, and I thought about with my brother Norris and, and his life and everything that I know about him. Here's what the Bible said. I, I, it's just a simple, simple thought. Brother Norris could say, like Paul, I fought. I fought. Now, he didn't have a spear. He didn't have bow and arrows. He didn't have a sword. He had a, a wrench and a screwdriver and and uh, all those things, but Brother Norris fought. And when you look at the idea of fighting in the Bible, Paul says this, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. As I think of, uh, as I think of Brother Norris, you got to understand, we're 50 years. He's 50 years here. You know, you don't have, a pre you don't have preachers like Brother Tom and Brother John and me Without us, sometimes or another hurting your feelings. That just is going to happen. 
we're just going to step on your toe sooner or later. I promise you, it's going to happen. But do you understand, Brother Norris never, ever, ever got sideways with his preachers? Never. Never. And you say, well, Jim, uh, uh, you're, you're just, uh, uh, y'all were just three good preachers. No, he was just a good guy. He was just a mighty man because he just endured hardness. And, and the truth of the matter is, you, you weren't going to, you, you weren't going to get him to quit. You weren't going to. You weren't going to uh, call him a name on Facebook and have him back off. You're not going to have him change because you didn't. I mean, Brother Norris, he, he can endure it. And uh, I think you know, uh, we, it snows around here. Brother Norris going to be at church. You just endure it. And Brother Norris was a fighter. First uh, Timothy six twelve says, "Fight the good fight of faith." Lay hold on eternal life, whereto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I want you to understand this. Brother Norris's greatest weapon was not a wrench or a screwdriver. Brother Norris, one of his greatest weapons was his testimony. Revelation says this, and they overcame him, talking about overca- they overcame the devil by, number one, the blood of the Lamb. Number two, they overcame him by the word of their testimony. And number three, they overcame him because they loved not their lives to the death. Let me tell you what made Brother Norris great. Brother Norris was great because he understood, first of all, that the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ cleansed him from all sin. He understood above above everything else that it it was not his works of righteousness that could inherit him everlasting life. He knew it was the precious blood of Christ. But he also knew that go along with the precious blood of Christ, he ought to keep his testimony clean. That he ought to live right. That he ought to do right. He ought to treat people right. He ought to be honest. And if Brother, if Brother Norris told you something, you could bank on it. It was going to happen or he'd die trying. Uh, I, but but it, it was about his testimony. And he had a testimony because he wanted to make sure that he pleased God and wanted to make sure that he honored his church. As you and I, church members, you realize that, that every church member, you have a testimony, and it shows, it has a reflection on our church. Everybody does. Brother Nara says, over, he overcame him, I'm talking about the devil, because of the blood and because of the word of testimony. And then the third thing, he says, they love not their lives unto the death. I'm going to tell you, the greatest thing about Brother Nara is he was a very unselfish man unselfish man. I can tell you time and time again, uh, Brother Norris uh, uh, taking out his wallet and paying things for people. I mean, just left and right paying. And it's not just that. I mean, he didn't have to give you money. All you had to do was say that you needed something, he'd be there. Broke back and all. He'd come with his truck load of tools and he wouldn't leave until he had your problem fixed. It was not about anything about him. It was all about he was a totally unselfish man. So he fought with some very strange tools. He fought with the love of God. The Bible says that our weapons are not carnal to the pulling down of strongholds, but our, 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 our weapons are spiritual. And Brother Norris learned how to use uh, his, 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 his spiritual weapons. If you look back at David's mighty men, I referenced it earlier. If you look back at those mighty men, they were mighty. There's no doubt about it. Those guys were men. But they became great men because of their purpose was to make sure David could be all that he could be. It was not about them. We're going to help David be the greatest king the world has ever known. And he was. And it's because he had a group of men behind him that were not in it for their own agendas. They were not in it trying to make a name for themselves. They were all in this thing to make David great. I'm going to tell you, we're in a problem in America today because everybody has their own agenda. Nobody, and you may not like this, but nobody wants to make America great. Everybody wants to make themselves great. And when we get to where we want to make somebody else great, and you're more interested in somebody else than you are yourself, you're about to become a significant person. But as long as it's all about you, as long as you're wrapped up in yourself, that is a very, very small world you live in. And we got people like that. We got the face of the younger generation, this me generation. They are so wrapped up in themselves, they're no earthly good. We've got to get where you are. You're not wrapped up about yourself, but you're all about helping somebody else be all they can be. And that's Brother Norris.
Brother Norris is all about him trying to help you be all you can be. I, I admire him greatly for it. Then he said, Paul said, uh, Paul said, I'm finished. Paul got to the end. He says, it's done. I'm finished. I got to thinking about that. In order for you to finish something, you got to get started. In order for you to finish something, you got to be doing something. Brother Norris could say, I'm finished. By the way, he didn't, he didn't say I quit. In fact, he didn't quit to the last, I mean, he didn't quit all the way to the end. He didn't quit. Uh, he and Brother John didn't know how to quit. It wasn't in their dictionary. They didn't, they didn't understand the meaning of the word. They didn't, they didn't you, you could say, you could go to Brother North and say, they're, they're, that can't be done. He says, it can be done. We can make it happen. And, uh. Uh, I, I, we have a we had a barbecue for years. We had a we had we had to make 60, 65 gallons of red gravy, and um, uh, it, it, it's quite an ordeal. We had we had boat paddles using to stir it with, and and we had every teenager we could find to come and stir this stir this pot, stir this pot, stir this pot, and I'd give them this same speech all the time. I said, "Now, son, you listen to me." I said, "If this building catches on fire," And burns to the ground. When I go through the ashes of this building, I want to find the ashes of your bones connected to the ashes of this paddle. And I want the ashes of this paddle in the bottom of the ashes of the pot that you're going to be stirring. That's how serious this thing is. I said, we got, this, we got, we got several hundred dollars worth in this pot, and it can't burn. I want, I, you understand this? And I mean, we had them, but you couldn't keep them. I mean, you know, a boy can paddle a boat fishing all day long. But you get him stirring a pot out of about three rounds, they're tired. And uh, so, Brother Norris, we got to fix this. We got to fix this. So, Brother Norris engineered probably the one and only self stirring pot. It's 75 gallons, stainless steel. Got a spout on the bottom of it because you can't pick it up empty. And uh, I have a spout on, and on top of it is a lid fastened down with gears and, 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 and sprockets. And it's got a, 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 a fan belt, a belt going up to a motor attached to the wall. And you turn that thing on, that belt pulls, those gears move, and that paddle turns to the bottom of that pot. And it will do it forever. Just, just sits there and turns. But Norris said, don't tell me you can't do it. Find a way to do it. He finished. He said, I fought. I finished. And then he says, I kept the faith. Paul said, I've been faithful. I can send to Mike and I can tell you right now, my friend's been faithful. The true test of Christianity is not measured in days, months, or years, but decades. Brother Norris is a member of this church for five decades. And he's always been the same. He's always been consistent. He's always been faithful. He's always been loyal. We go all down through the qualities of Brother Norris. I can say emphatically that Brother Norris was a mighty man. But at the end of the day, Brother Norris Phillips was just a man. That being said, Brother Norris needed a Savior just like you do. That being said, Brother Norris, outside of the Lord Jesus Christ, would have gone through the same hell that everybody else goes to. And all these things that I've said, and I could talk here probably, and we could gather around, and we could talk about Brother Norris and sing his praises for several hours. And I could go down all his qualities of loyalty and, 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 and uh, having a right spirit. And a right, I could go all day long about his attitudes. But I want to remind you of this. Brother Norris would amen it. The Bible says it's not by works of righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercy he saved us. I want to say this. If a, if a man could earn heaven. Brother Norris is the man to do it. But 
Brother Norris would tell you that there is no amount of goodness in him and his own personal righteousness was not good enough to get him through the gates of heaven. He had to have the righteousness of somebody else. And that righteousness was the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Brother Norris put his faith and trust in Christ. And Brother Norris today walks on streets of gold. Not because of his good works. And they are, they are plenty. But because of a good Savior that he put his faith and trust in. Brother Norris could tell you right now, if he could speak to you, he'd say, I'm enjoying the pleasures of heaven because of mercy and grace. It's mercy and grace. I thought about him, and if I could summarize his life with one verse, this would be it. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So, brother, how do you know Brother Norris loved you? Because he served you. How do you know Brother Norris loved the church? Because he served it. How do you know he loved his family? Because he served them. Jesus said, the greatest among you will be your servant. Brother Norris is a great man. He says, by love, serve one another. I mean, encourage you, don't, don't live for yourself. Don't get so wrapped up in you that you miss the world. Don't, don't get so wrapped up in you that you miss that you miss your family. Don't, don't get so wrapped up in what you can get. But learn, Brother Norris, if you're watching, Brother Norris, Brother, Brother Norris show you, you need to care more about the other guy than you do yourself. That was Brother Norris. By love, serve one another. Brother Norris was not in it for making himself a name. Brother Norris wouldn't like all the, all, 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 the, all, the, all the words today. Brother Norris was the guy. He'd rather stand back somewhere and just work. Somewhere just, just, just do his thing and let somebody else get the credit. They, uh, 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 Brother Norris loved his king. Brother Norris loved his family. Brother Norris loved his church. And he loved his pastors. The truth of the matter is he was more interested in making us all we could be than anything for himself. Whatever you need, Brother Jim. Whatever you need. Brother Norris is a great man. Most of us realize we're getting older and this generation is dying off the scene. We sure need to replace them with some very high quality, loving, God-fearing people. Fellas, we need, this generation needs another group of mighty men. Stop thinking about yourself Stop thinking about how much fun you can have and what you can do next, how much pleasure you can have and lose yourself in a cause bigger than you are. You can make a difference. Don't see how many people can you can get to help you. See how many people you can help. And you may measure up when you get 84 years old to the caliber of man this was. He's my friend, and we're going to miss him. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so grateful. I am so grateful that I had the privilege of knowing him, working beside him, eating together for almost 45 years. He's my friend. I pray that, Lord, you'd help the family. I pray that, Lord, you'd help them be encouraged and comforted. Lord, I have no doubt where he's at. But, Lord, there's a possibility that there's someone here today that doesn't know you as Savior. They don't know you like Brother Norris knew you and knows you now. So, Lord, I pray that you'd help us speak to our hearts. Help the family now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me encourage you. If you are concerned about where you'd spend eternity, I promise you I can help you with that.
And uh, I got a book right here that tells you how to get from here to heaven. And it works. All right? So if you'll let me know, we'll be glad to do it. But stand together as we sing Amazing Grace. <clears throat> Page number three, if you need it in your songbook. <clears throat> Thank you, you are dismissed.